Hey guys, what's up? Fresh Actions here and welcome back to this brand new video. Now guys, it's race week and as you can probably hear it's raining quite hard and uh, well... Yeah. Um, you have probably seen it in the thumbnail or title but I don't know yet. But yeah, the weekend looks to be very wet so far. Uh, it's actually a thunderstorm in the Netherlands but I of course don't know how it is at Spa. Anyways, I'm going to be driving and I'll see you guys in Belgium. Alright people, the footage on your screen right now is from my way to Spa. And from the minute you cross the border into Belgium, the views you get are just absolutely stunning. Also, some of these highways are crazy steep and our 100 BHP van struggles to get up some of them. Now guys, if you want to help me get up these super steep hills in our slow ass van, then I would appreciate it enormously if you would consider hitting those like and subscribe button. Every like and sub is 100% absolutely confirmed to bring one extra BHP into the van. And also a huge shout out to Harry Harrison for making this awesome animation. I actually found a way to mount my camera to my head so that I can film and drive safely at the same time. I'll shut up for now and let you enjoy this ride with me. Welcome to the car track. Uh, yeah, I said I was going to the uh, to uh, our little house first, but I went to the car track first. I gave the guy from the house a call, and uh, yeah, he told me that the key was underneath a rock that was in the garden. So yeah, I didn't have to be there to personally uh, get it. We've got something interesting this weekend because on the big track there's actually some sort of classic, so classic Le Mans cars and everything that's going to be there. It's really cool. Also, I got a sponsorship surprise from the team. Uh, I'll show you guys in the evening. And uh, we're actually now going to build up a tent and I'll show you guys the process of that too. And here you guys can see the inside of the truck. Here is um, a brand new LN card in the uh, MDB livery, of course. This one's for one of the junior drivers for uh, Mitchell. And then for the mini chassis, we actually run the KR because uh, yeah, the carbon public chassis is actually quite competitive. The small carbon public chassis is quite competitive in Rotax. Alright guys, so the tent is completely built up. I am now at our little uh, holiday home and we are really in the middle of the Ardennes and in a small Belgian village. Take a look at this. Look, here's the road. The, the road here was the most insane road I've ever driven. I really haven't driven that many roads. But yeah, this one surely was the most insane one. Uh, and this is our little house right here. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty, pretty cozy actually. Um, yeah, wait, let's go inside. I have the keys right here. Let's go inside. Oh my god guys, look at this! It's amazing! Wow, oh look, you can sleep up there as well! So yeah, I actually pulled up into uh, the wrong uh, driveway first and then I got some uh, angry Belgian grandma screaming at me and uh, well, she was like, oh, do you belong to this guy? But then in French, in French of course, which I don't speak, which was very interesting and I said, yeah, uh, I, I have this address. I told her my address and they said, oh no, that's a little house uh, up the road. I don't understand it a little bit, I understand Maison Blanche, which was a uh, white house. Look here and have another door. And then look at this, guys. This is nice. This is a reoccurring theme I, uh, I see with Belgian homes. Like on the outside, they look like they were built in like the 1920s. But then inside, it's amazing. Take a look at this, guys. This looks cute, right? This is amazing. So let's get some of the things unpacked and I'll catch up with you guys later. All right, so I was unpacking my stuff and I saw my dad flew by here. He went to the wrong address at first, so now I sent him my location and I think there, he could, there he's coming. There he is. Master chef, boys. 
I'm absolutely starving, so I'm, I'm going to enjoy this. Alright guys, remember that surprise that I uh, talked to you guys about? Brand new MDB custom suit, look at that. That's cool, right? So yeah, big shout out to uh, Mike from MDB Motorsport for providing me with this, I really appreciate it. Anyways guys, I am uh, going to have a little shower there, then I'm going to sleep, and then I will uh, see you guys tomorrow at the track. Alright glorious people of the interwebs, good morning. Uh, we've just arrived, uh, now building in this new uh, T11 uh, VTI seat. I think that's going to be a big improvement over what we used to run. Anyways, I'm going to get my track ticket now and I'll show you the card in a few minutes. Yeah. people welcome aboard my little happy place as you've seen we actually already went testing on Friday and that was very necessary if you remember the last time we went out here testing then you'll know that I actually had a lot of handling problems and that we couldn't find the cause of that usually that means that the chassis or something might be broken or that there's a small crack in the chassis or that it has just lost its rigidity and throughout this day we really couldn't find the issue one positive thing however was the fact that the Tele T11 VTI seat was a huge step in the right direction. The car had a lot more front end bite without actually losing stability. In the background you can see footage of the first session, I was struggling to keep up with basically everyone out on the track. Last time I had troubles everywhere on the circuit but now our data guy was actually able to make me improve on most parts of the track. Now the corners I struggled with were the hairpin, the corner after that and the one after that. This sequence of corners actually was my Achilles heel for the entire weekend and you can see on the footage here that the other driver pulls away by a considerable margin after these corners. Now skipping ahead to a little bit later point of the day on the last session that I took part in you can really tell that I was struggling. Normally my onboards look kind of smooth but this just looks absolutely horrible. Missing apexes, bouncing, bogging, really just a lot of unnatural things that I usually don't have. people so uh, yeah it's not going well you've probably heard that on the commentary already but uh, yeah we're off the pace quite a bit um, I don't know what it is that's the problem usually you can find out what it is uh, yeah we think it's a chassis I'm not sure yet I'm going to find it out very soon of course because uh, tomorrow I'm actually going to test on a almost brand new one a LN card and yeah if it then still <laughs> doesn't go to plan then we have a massive, massive problem. Anyways, I'll catch up with you guys at the end of the day. Enjoy the last two or last onboards, or maybe no onboards, I don't know yet, we'll see. My freaking ears. I don't know if you guys have ever heard modern F1 cars, the V6 ones. But these things are a heck of a lot louder than the modern F1 cars, I can tell you that. Alright people, so uh, yeah, it's the end of the day. Uh, I unfortunately couldn't do the last session because of this. Yeah, it's raining very, very hard. So uh, yeah, we decided to skip the last one. But yeah, we managed to find a little bit of improvement on the new set of tires. But yeah, still, still not right there. We still have to find a little bit. Uh, but yeah, now it's just a matter of getting this thing clean. Going home, having a good night of sleep. And then uh, tomorrow we'll see you again.
So right now we are on our way back from the circuit to our little holiday home. Through Stavelo, mountains, dense forest and across some very very cool looking rivers. The roads here are just absolutely awesome and I hope this footage can do it just a little bit of justice. By the way guys, do you like winning free karting stuff? Or maybe some big discounts on karting products? If so, listen in. To my sponsor K Racing, I am allowed to give you guys some awesome awesome discounts. Every few weeks we do a different category of product and this week it's time for the OTK wheel hubs and rims. All products on this page are brand new and 100% original and they now all have a 15% discount. I promise you, you won't find these products anywhere else for cheaper. With our global shortages of basically any raw materials and the huge amount of inflation, new parts are sometimes hard to get and very expensive. So this is the perfect time to save some money on all of these parts. And like I said, I guarantee you that you won't find these products anywhere cheaper. Anywhere. I promise. So head over to the hubs and wheels section, fill up your basket and then use the code HUB15 on checkout. So head over to K Racing, hubs and wheels and use the code HUB15 on checkout. This code will only last for as long as the stocks last. So if you want that brand new set of MXC wheels, you better be quick. Someone else might snatch that brand new set of MXC wheels from right in front of you. Also, together with K Racing we will be doing a giveaway to one lucky viewer. Stay tuned for more details on the giveaway. But where were we? Oh yeah, beautiful road. Enjoy the views guys. people so now we're back at our little house um, yeah the day of driving it was interesting to say the least uh, yeah there were quite a bit of troubles in the first two sessions again like the ones we had last week but then in the last one it actually went a little bit better so that's good yeah we went on new tires and uh, I think we were uh, yeah a little bit closer on pace again we're still missing quite a lot but uh, yeah definitely a step in the right direction but yeah let's just see how tomorrow goes what the weather will bring and then uh, yeah we have like five four or five practice sessions I don't really know Anyways guys, I'm going to go to bed in not that long from now and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. Alright people, good morning. Uh, I've had a wonderful night of sleep and now it's time for uh, the official Saturday practice uh, which of course concludes all of the uh, last practice sessions, the uh, what's it called, the scrutineering and also the registration. I feel actually a lot more active than yesterday so that's good. Uh, I think we can get a, a bit more of a better day today. Uh, at least I hope so. And also today of course we're going to test with the uh, brand new engine and maybe also a newer chassis because we still have a suspicion that the chassis is not quite right. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll find that out. Anyways, I have to get back to the tent because I actually have to drive in a couple of minutes. So uh, I'll see you guys on the GoPro footage. At the end of Friday we decided to make some setup changes that actually turned out very well. The car felt great, but there was one weird thing. My throttle was stuck open for like a fraction of a second every time I came off the power and it progressively became worse as the session went on. So much so that when I tried to go for the overtake, this happened. Yeah, kind of embarrassing. I came back to the pits, but there the throttle was fine for some weird reason, so my mechanic sent me back out there. But the issue persisted, and I knew something was definitely not right. Yeah, I'm stupid. Uh, this is the outer throttle cable, and uh, I was actually stupid enough to uh, make this go underneath the engine, so it was basically squeezed in between the engine and the uh, chassis. So that's why it was stuck open, and only in corners to the right. So yeah, I'm just dumb. Uh, it's fixed now, even though that was happening, uh, I was only like four tenths off. So we really found the pace compared to yesterday, so that's good. I'm feeling actually a lot more confident than yesterday's, and uh, well, th this didn't help. But now that I know it was this, I'm actually feeling a lot more confident again. Let's see what the rest of this day brings. So the rest of Saturday was actually really good. I improved every session and the card was great. I actually did not even have to test the LN chassis because my current one was still fine. Anyways, this is the last session of the day and let's ride on board for a lap.
like we turned things around, finally. The pace was good, I was feeling confident and the car was on rails. Maybe it was a little bit too much on rails though. Yep, we went up on two wheels again. The car was actually so grippy that the cornering forces became too much for the center of gravity and I went off track by a little bit. Really strange, I was pretty much the only one who had this issue and it's a really weird corner to have this. Usually you would have this in like hairpins or medium speed corners, but this is a high speed corner. And also I didn't really make a mistake or something, it just happened by itself. Really weird and not really a good way to end the day. Alright people, so uh, yeah, the day's done. Uh, yeah. You know, whenever, uh, you know, most of the day was positive, but whenever a uh, final session of the day doesn't really go to plan, then, you know, the whole day kind of gets coded in a negative feeling, you know. And, well, that's, what, that's what's going on with me now as well. I think if you're a car to yourself, you probably know what I'm talking about. But, yeah, the, the last session was really weird. I had new tires, but, yeah, it just, didn't, it just didn't work. And it was mostly down to me because I started braking a lot different. And, yeah, it's just weird. Anyways, guys, I'm going to have a nice barbecue now. Uh, Hopefully we'll get a little bit more speed tomorrow, but uh, yeah, we'll see. qualifying time. If you guys remember the last race, then you'll know how important track position is. That is why once again everyone was waiting when the sign went up. When I decided to eventually go out, I followed the number 333, because I knew that he was quite quick over a single lap and that would give me a great toe. So going into lap 3 now, the peak performance of this tire. We get a great great gap of about 8 tenths, which is perfect for slipstream but just far enough away so that you won't be right on his bumper in just a couple of corners. Let's start this quality lap. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. And that's how easily a qualifying session can be ruined. So here I tried to create space to have another go the next lap, but the peak of the tires had already gone, so it was basically already over. In the data we could see that I lost about two and a half tenths because I had to brake early, and because the field was super close around here, that would have gave me something like eight or nine places. Very, very, very annoying. And to be clear, this was nobody's fault. I of course could not have known that he would take another warm-up lap. And unlike F1, there are no gentlemen's agreements on track position, so he did nothing wrong either. So that meant P15 for the pre-final. guys welcome to the pre-final as you can see we're getting up uh, well nice and close to the 366 there even giving him a little bit of a tap but then uh, everyone gets on the power but we actually don't get that good of a getaway and we get an absolutely shocking start once again but luckily the entire left hand side gets an even worse start so we can actually keep our position going into turn one it's always important to look ahead so that you can avoid any crashes but luckily there are no crashes this time i have to say this entire weekend was pretty clean no cr no big crashes no front fairings no well not, not a lot of anyways Anyways, uh, let's keep looking ahead. You can see that it's a little bit of chaos. Uh, I decided to take the inside line here, but when you go around the outside like that LN card over there, you can actually gain quite a lot of position, but we squeeze them out, so we keep our position there. We briefly lost it, but luckily we uh, reclaimed it. Now here it's basically very hard to overtake. You could send it up the inside into this one because you make a very late apex, but then you really have to have some big pair of cojones to send it in there. And luckily no one dive bombs us into there. Okay, good. Now let's focus on the chicane. And one thing I actually noticed is that we are actually 
quite strong in the chicane. We gain quite a lot on the entry and we lose nothing on exit. So that's good. Now going into the slipstream, going into lap 2, uh, we cannot go uh, for a move because we're too far away. But there, up ahead, you can see that there's a little bit of chaos, someone going through the sand and all of that stuff. And whenever that happens, I decide to hang back a little bit. So I decided to take a little bit cautious. I could have followed the 366 there, but uh, yeah, better, better to be safe than sorry. Here I take it cautiously again, and you can see there's some more chaos. And because we are hanging back, we actually get a better exit, and we can actually overtake two people there. So by being a little bit cautious, it can pay off sometimes. Usually I'm like, send it, send it into the gap. But yeah, for some reason this weekend I was very cautious and in this instance it has actually paid off. And also guys, by the way, uh, I know some of you like uh, the races without commentary. So for all of those guys, I will upload the pre-final and the final unedited onto YouTube. One or two days after this one got released. Alright, skipping ahead to the end of lap 3 now. Uh, like I said, we are very strong coming out of the chicane and uh, maybe we can uh, transform that into an overtake because of course we have an absolute rocket ship of an engine. Going into the slipstream of the 353 now, we're gaining, 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 but we are just not quite there yet. And in hindsight, I probably should have gone for that move, but there was a very big chance that would have ended in tears for both of us. So yeah, at that time I decided to, uh, you know, take a little bit easy because I didn't want to crash because we had a lot of damage last race and I have to think about my budget as well. Here, uh, yeah, just... You know, it, it is possible to go for the dive bomb, but A, you will lose a buttload of time, and B, there is a big chance that you will actually, well, end both of our races. So, uh, yeah, he's actually quite nervous. You can see him looking uh, over his shoulder a little bit. Uh, that's something I unlearned quite quickly. Um, yeah, I used to do that a lot as well, but it actually only hinders you because uh, what's behind you doesn't matter, and you're only going to make yourself stressed out by looking behind you. Now we get actually a little bit of a uh, worse run out of the chicane and we skip ahead to lap 6 now. You can see that the 353 pulled away ever so slightly. Uh, the field was really close but he was just a little bit quicker and I think we, yep, we actually get overtaken by the 366. And for some reason he decides to go defensive which really wasn't necessary because I wanted to follow him anyways. It, that only makes us both lose time. So yeah, let's just uh, see if we can keep up with him, maybe drive back to the 353. Because yeah, he was a little bit quicker than me. Uh, overall everyone was really close so basically um, everyone between P2 and P20 had the pace to finish on the podium. Only the first yeah, one or two guys were really, really uh, a long way faster than the rest. Now skipping ahead to lap 12, you can see that the 366 actually going for the overtake. And because of it, the 353 actually get a bad exit. And can we sneak it up the inside here through the rocks? Yes we can, it's really tight. He squeezes us all the way to the apex, but we get a super bad exit. Maybe he can do the switchback. No, we got him. So we're back up into P13 now. Uh, yeah, so that makes it a net gain of two positions from the start of this race, which is uh, kind of okay. Would have loved to see more, of course, but as you can see, uh, yeah, the gaps to the drivers had are quite, quite big. And yeah, that was basically the race. Nothing much really happened, so that was a P13 finish for us, gaining two places. So in the end, we finished in P13. Not really where I want to be, but like I said, the field is so close that overtaking can be a little bit difficult. Also, I was on the cautious side for some reason, which is really unnatural for me. Take a look at the previous two races for example, I was absolutely flying through the pack. Race pace was okay and like I said, basically everyone is quick at Spa apart from the first two guys who were alien this weekend. All in all it was a clean race and we once again have the inside line for the next start. Alright guys, welcome to the final. This time I decided to hang back just a little bit so that we can get on the power earlier, but it doesn't seem to be working and again we get an absolute shocker of a start, but luckily the guy starting in P12, so to the left of us also gets an absolute shocker, but he manages to brave around the outside so we lose that place again, so we're uh, back on uh, zero net places gained. It's always important also with this start to keep focused ahead and as you can see there, there's a little bit of contact between the two drivers ahead of me, uh, but we cannot profit from that because the contact was not very major. Uh, we go defensive once again to the hairpin, but the 363 tries to go around the outside, but the 366 actually breaks way too late and we can do a switchback and we actually gain his place. So that's P12. Uh, now uh, keeping our focus ahead of us because there you can see that's someone going for the overtake again, but we're too far away to profit from that. I think if we were a little bit closer we could have gotten him as well and here you can see some awesome external shots. You saw some external shots at the start too, but yeah, this is really awesome. Going over the chicane, you can see that we got a pretty decent exit. Going into the slipstream of the 375, but we are not quite close enough to go for a move or something. Yeah, it's just, for some reason the slipstream wasn't just that, was just not that powerful 
at Spa because the you know the, the straights are all downhill or uphill and for some reason slipstream just doesn't really work that well in there. Also everyone was running a completely different sport kit. But there you can see the 375 goes for the overtake and let's see if we can profit from that one now. But no we cannot. He uh, closes the door on the inside so we cannot go past him. We're still stuck behind him now and uh, as you can see we're actually able to follow him quite nicely going through the chicane. Now we're now really close again in the slipstream, in the slipstream, in the slipstream, but for some reason we just don't really have the power, we could go for it, but again, I just felt like we were a little bit too far away, which is actually a really, really similar situation to the move we almost did in uh, race one, because I just felt like we were a little bit too far away, and going for the gap would have probably ended in tears for both of us. But one thing that was pretty good, however, is that we are now actually a lot more consistent and we were consistently doing lap times to keep up with this group because this train went all the way up to P2. Like the first one in this train was, you know, P2. So, you know, we had the pace to finish P2. But for some reason, yeah, it, it just was just so difficult to overtake this weekend. And especially for me, I don't know what, what was wrong, but yeah, I, I just wasn't feeling it. I, yeah, being out of the sport for so long just really takes a hit on your confidence and racing in general. Now skipping ahead to lap 9, you can see that the group ahead of us is still right there. They pulled uh, away by only a little bit, but that's manageable. Uh, going into the double left hander now, it's actually an amazing corner. This corner has a lot of banking, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But there you can see the 375 goes for another move again, so let's see if we can profit from that. The 333 profits from that, but he gets the outside for the next corner. And now I try to go up the inside as well, but we actually touch him and lose all of our momentum. So now we have to be careful that we don't get overtaken behind us. But then you can see we got an absolutely massive push. But uh, yeah, that's just part of karting. Uh, when you're on the line and you go slow, and we actually lose two positions because of that. But when you're on the line and you go slow, it's in almost inevitable that you get a push from behind. So yeah, no hard feelings, that's just karting. But from this moment on, it just all went downhill. For some reason, that little push, it, it completely offset my focus. And you can see that the group ahead of me pulled ahead, uh, away by quite some margin. And uh, yeah, I just noticed that in this race, um, yeah, my focus was just gone. I really need something like a mental coach or some kind of, you know, uh, what that lady does to Lewis Hamilton, that blonde uh, older lady, just some sort of coach. I just need that, but I don't really have the budget for that. So if any mental coaches are watching this and you want to sponsor me, you know, my uh, email address is in the description down below. But as you can see, out of us there's more chaos and someone gets pushed right there. Let's see if we can overtake him. Yes, we can. That's a free position. Thank you very, very much. So now we're back uh, to where we started actually. And uh, so that will mean a net position gain of zero, which is, yeah, not a good race. In my books, if you're not going forward, you're going backwards. So yeah, that's not a good race. But actually we finished in P12 because the guy uh, that pushed off the other guy got a penalty. So P12 it is. Really not happy with that result. The field was so freaking close that from P2 all the way to P21, everyone was basically doing the same lap times. So take a look for yourself. But like I said, I was really struggling with my focus and regaining my concentration after that little push. So we definitely need to work on that. How? I don't know. I will try to fix it myself, I think. At least we got some pace, but so does everyone else. And guys, I am so freaking, freaking hungry for vengeance now. I, I really hope we can get it at the next round, but of course, it's all down to me. All right, people, so it's the end of the weekend. Uh, yeah, pretty disappointed with myself. Uh, it was pretty clear that, yeah, I've been out of racing for a long, long time and I really haven't got any race rhythm, you know? Like, the guys at the front, they do a race almost, yeah, almost a couple of races per month. And, well, yeah, that's just really hard to keep up with, and I know that. But still, the speed in the last race was actually pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy about that, and, well, until that mis little mistake happened. All in all, it was a pretty good weekend. Well, pretty good. Uh, learned a lot, definitely. Uh, starting to get back into race rhythm a little bit now. But the conclusion is that I really, really have to get back into racing. I have to do more races, actually. It's just, well, whenever I go driving, it's just a mess in here. And I, I, I need to change that, but that, that's difficult, of course, when you have to do everything yourself. But hey, that's what the team is for. I really need to, you know, use the facilities of the team more because, uh, yeah, I'm doing all the things myself that I really don't have to do myself. Anyways, guys, with that also comes the end of this video and the end of going here, which, yeah, this place, come on, everything here is racing. I absolutely love it here. But guys, if you enjoyed that, then please consider to hit those like and subscribe buttons. You know how much it means to me. Also, don't forget to check out the description and use the code HUB15 for a 50% discount on everything on the uh, OTK wheel hubs and rims page. On screen right now, you will find two other videos that you might enjoy. But for now, that was it. Peace.